Today we're going to be looking at that Chen Pao Bat Scalibur with the inclusion of the scary Iron Hansy X option. It's really well supported in this deck list where we have the Earthen Vessel and Superior Energy Retrieval, as well as two copies of Super Rods to allow us to burst an Ampy very much onto the scene all in one turn, especially when we're playing the Cross Witcher build. We have multiple targets that we can take advantage of with this Iron Hands EX. So even when we come up against single prize matchups, we're still able to carve out multi-prize turns. We have the Radiant Greninja in here as well, which is still pretty good at doing that in its own right, and forces Manaphy onto the field for a number of players. We have the Chen Pao EX being the perfect attacker into the multi-prize threats, like your Charizards, your Mews, that sort of thing, Roaring Moon, of course. So this deck has two really exceptional attackers in the game, and it's trying to take advantage of the Super Cold from Batscalibur to load these up freely throughout the entire game. I do think this deck gets a little bit smoother being able to cut the double cancelling clone in order to fit the Iron Hands. It means that we can load a little bit higher on the Ball Search, which is always a nice thing to see. And the Earthen Vessel is another really nice upgrade. This really helps us just get even more access to water in the opening stages. This is huge for us to get using concealed cards every single turn. Just gives us really good turn to burst potential with the Hailblade when need be into these multi-prize racing matchups. And one sort of softer thing is that it's thinning the deck even more of these water energy so that when you're slamming these Pokestops, you just have better ratios of getting hits, which is obviously a big part of this archetype. The Pokestop and the really high count of these item cards is still the main way that people are finding to play the Chen Pao archetype. So giving yourselves just better ratios with Vessel being something you can find now, which is like a much more live card than Cancelling Clone used to be, but also the fact that when the Vessel's in hand pre-stop, you're able to thin these energies out of the deck. Quick tip, always good to get the Lightning Energy out of the deck pretty quickly so that you can conceal it into the bin. Then it means that your superior is alive for the remainder of the game. Uh, just really helps out making sure you're getting maximum use from the Iron Hands. I am choosing to play two Vessel, one Lightning. There's obviously the headache of prizing your Lightning Energy, which can be a headache every now and then. But the upside of playing the additional Vessel, again, just better from the poker stops, better at thinning through the deck being an extra discard card so that you're drawing more with industrious incisors throughout the entire game and just gives you more burst potential. It's just an overall better card than seeing that second lightning, which is like a fine card, I suppose, but really doesn't have too much utility unless you want to use arm press with your iron hands itself. The archetype is still a little bit vulnerable, not the most consistent archetype in the game still, even though it does have these minor percentage upgrades and it's a little bit terrified of iron valiant. I think this is one of valiant's like best matchups actually, because we are so reliant on the 60 hit points and just the 170 hit point Frigibax. It's very easy for our opponent to pick apart our board and our attackers really aren't that stunning unless we have Super Cold online. We pretty much always fall prey to their traps. So as long as they get into the game, uh, it means that we're pretty much not getting into it. So yeah, there are still challenges for Iron Hands. It's kind of been really heavily played, but underperforming in the format so far from what we've seen in the online tournaments. But this is one of the trickier, more sequence heavy decks that you have to learn. And there are other tips and tricks along the way that you can try and safeguard yourself uh, in terms of your board position, but also cashing in on super cold at different times proactively so that you're putting yourself in a decent position, even if a bat's caliber was able to be gusted or whatnot. Um, or if you're going to get hit with Path to the Peak, this, that, and the other, or if the barrel's going down. There's a lot you can do, actually, and it's all about the sequencing, I feel, with this archetype. Let me know your thoughts on Chen Pao Bats Calibur down below. Do you think it's a trap with Iron Hands? Do you still like seeing the cancelling cologne? And uh, how strong do you actually think this archetype is? Because its percentages are looking pretty woeful right now. Enjoy the games, and I'll see you tomorrow for another video. If you're looking for PTCG live codes, make sure you check out the Town store. You can get a 5% discount on your orders using that code OMNIPOKE. So getting into this first game, we get to begin. And the hand isn't great. We have, uh, looks like Pokestop's going to need to be doing some work here. Yep, nothing from the top deck. We do get the poker stop hitting VIP pass, so we're getting into the game now. Sometimes your games do live and die by a few cards here from concealed cards or a poker stop there. <laughs> uh, but it seems like we're at least going to have something going on here. We're staring down Roaring Moon as well, which is a deck that can pressurize pretty quickly. I need to take the water and the lightning energy out pretty quick. Also going to try and protect this Bidoof, seeing as I do have double Frigibax. backs. Um, and pass things over. Always nice to get the lightning energy out of the deck, uh, get it in the mix for superiors and such. Our hand's not great for next turn, but it's like a piece away, so maybe Greninja can help out here. 
as the Roaring Moon gets their turn underway with a Vessel here. I think they poker stopped as well. So at least one Dark. And we see Water Energy Package, so it's going to be the uh, Roaring Moon list that has the Quad E-Switch Shuriken option. But actually it looks like we're not going to be hit with the Shuriken turn 1 at least, because the Sala's just been for one Darkness Energy here. Like they needed the Sada to draw some cards, but from that they hit their own VIP and now can begin to discard some more with concealed cards and probably Squawkabilly here. Second VIP coming down. See Mew EX and another Roaring Moon. See Dark Patch and the Turn Attachment, so their Moon is ready to rumble here. It's a little bit frustrating because the Poker Stops possibly going to get discarded here. And uh, we can actually really use that. You see uh, cross switches, actually. Debates over Greninja or Bidoof. Uh, yeah, I think Bidoof is a solid choice there. The reason to go for the Greninja would be that I used a Vessel last turn, so they know I can get draw off of it, whereas Bidoof, you don't always guarantee that I get draw. But I suppose the Bibarrel has potential to just see so many more cards. We ended up top-decking the Bibarrel, actually, as well, so... Uh, we're able to conceal cards. We can rebench Bidoof. I'm going to get a turn attachment in. Actually, no, we're going to poke a stop first. Hoping to hit a uh, Ultra Ball there, right? Because we had the candy in hand. Uh, but from here, we have a lot of energy in our bin. I don't really want to go give up another single prize. So Iron Hands might just be useful here for being a big body. Yeah, we're actually going to retreat into this guy. Uh, with the opponent's board full, they would have to Frenzied Gouging to be able to knock us out. And that could allow us to Greninja on the following turn and get ourselves um, in slightly better shape where we'd be Respond KOing, but also setting up a Squawkabilly or a Mew. So that's the idea of throwing this Iron Hands up rather than just giving the opponents the Greninja. It's a little bit awkward, but it works on this board. Seeing so they've got no space for Bonnet. And obviously they're playing the E-Switch list, right? So they're probably not even playing the Bonnet stuff. We see another Sardas. Gonna load up the Moons again. There's the turn attachment to Greninja. Let's not forget that there is still that Shuriken option. We may have evaded it. I think their Squawk did get rid of a couple of their E-switches, though, so it wasn't super likely. Not like I could have done anything differently. But here's the good news. They have had to Frenzy Gouge, so we can lay the Greninja trap play on them. And the top deck of Irida actually opens up this hand massively. We can finally get this Manaphy into the mix to protect ourselves from... The opponent's Greninja a little bit whilst thinning down our hand quite nicely. We can use our second vessel here to get the Greninja raring to go. Not too much from the Bibarrel, but it does get the superior at least. We're going to poke stop looking for some targets for the superior, I think. We're going to get rid of Rope and Ultra, just get some of these energies back. Going to conceal to see a few more cards here. Uh, maybe a small argument to putting an extra energy on the Greninja here, but I think they're likely to go through the active, honestly. That's the best way to prevent the Squawkabilly being too short. They could also use Switch Cart on the Squawkabilly. That could also be handy. Can I see the concealed cards from our opponents? The Pokestop does hit trips, including Cross Switcher, so maybe they look to take backs here. Let's see, a Mew comes down. They're actually just going to Mysterious Tail. They pretty much have access to the entire deck. There's Poke Gear. That would guarantee a supporter. With seven cards left in their deck. There is a Sada. So they're pretty much towards the bottom of the deck now. Let's 
let's see. There's the turn attachment onto the Roaring Moon. Palpad's going to reload Boss and Sada. Do you see the switch cards? So we're already holding Rod and Nestball and Superior, so we should be able to have this reload pretty effectively here with the Greninja. We're also going to get the Chen Pao and the Bidoof back, just because I can fill my board with even more draw power. With Nestballing back the Bidoof here, having the Chen Pao to be our final prizes. I can even make my next backs as well, just in case the opponent wanted to try and take out a Bats Calibur with like some sort of hand disruptor. I was looking for more fodder for the concealed cards, and uh, we end up getting some Iridas, which isn't ideal, but at least I can uh, play them out now. Gre Greninja's ready to rumble, and we can finish off the Squawk. I'm also going to set up the Mew EX, basically forcing our opponent to, again, switch cards or go through the Greninja. Which basically just means I don't have my barrel knocked out, is the idea. But I have a huge amount of ways to win now. We have a fully one prize board state. Chen Pao can go through the active if they're attacking with Roaring Moon. Um, we have Greninja Reload Potential into the Mew for a spread KO. And we even have Iron Hands on the benched uh, Mysterious Tail Mew. Which could be game as well, or onto the Greninja. So uh, we have so many ways that we can actually close the game here. Let's see how our opponent... They have access to, like, the whole deck, so... <laughs> how can they make this better for themselves? We do see the switch carts. So at least that plays around the Greninja. They're also using their Greninja to take a single prize knockout. So that it would force Gust from me, but we haven't played any of our crossies, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, we actually have game just with cross switcher superior and attack with backs here, actually. So no need for any crazy shenanigans, no fishing to go through the entire deck. But with uh, Irida and whatnot, we had so many ways to win there. So yeah, nice win after a pretty awkward start. You know, having to pass with the nine hands isn't ideal, but that hit points is definitely something to bear in mind into the uh, Roaring Moon matchup. Let's get into the next one. I uh, have a good number of ball search cards here. Always great to get Bidoof into the mix early as well. The barrel is such an important part of this deck. Not only just to like see an extra few cards, but just such a big safeguard around the hand disruptors as the game progresses. We're also getting the benefit of a mulligan, which is nice. Uh, and you'll notice I'm going first quite a bit. Uh, many of my opponents on the ladder have started to make me go first, as in they want to go second, which is um, definitely good, actually, for Chen Pao. Chen Pao is one of the decks that does enjoy going first, I feel. You'll notice I don't go for a Frigibax here. I'm, I go proactively for Chen Pao, just to give myself higher odds for Pokestop. Um, it's definitely a contentious one there. If you just go Frigi uh, and pass, I, I would have like a lot of work to do with Greninja on the following turn. So it works out for me in this occasion, where I'm able to thin the deck of a couple extra energy to make the Pokestop a stronger card for me, ratio-wise. Uh, but what it's ended up doing is that I have a crazy board state, because I hit VIP pass, so... Uh, the fact that you would have to Nestball Frigia and then likely find a Chen Pao anyway throughout my next turn, it made sense to go for the, uh, the Chen Pao first, do the Shivery into stop combo. Definitely got... You really have to... Uh, play with your opening hands and see uh, the highest ratios for what type of draw you have, because obviously the Pokestop is situational draw power. Uh, but with the Vessel and Shivery Chill, you actually have a lot of thinning now. You have a lot more hits from the Pokestops. They're even stronger these days. The opponent with Artisan and the Call for Family Pidgey actually is able to get a really nice board established. We've now thinned our entire energy out of the deck. And Greninja hits, wow, two Pokemon, two things we really want to see, Bats Calibur and Bib. Um, the opponent has developed the early Manaphy, so I can't really capitalize on it too much. It might just be a 60 damage Hailblade here. Maybe some argument to like trying to retreat and go into Greninja and just take a one prize knockout. Uh, but we're not going to go for that line. Also, because my hand isn't ideal, and I know that Counter Catcher is definitely a thing that... 
uh, Zards can do these days. I go for a proactive um, Super Cold here. Just to safeguard myself from a Bat's Calibre going down a little bit. That's why I keep energy on the POW as well. Uh, obviously, just taking a one prize knockout forces Defiance Band uh, or Vitality Band from the Charizard to get a response KO. Uh, but what this does is it helps safeguard us around, yeah, Counter Catcher on the backs, because my hand really wasn't ready for a backs going down. Um, basically, I didn't have another Irida. <laughs> and only, like, I was able to thin my hand with Superior, then play all the energy out. But if I was to hold the hand before Super Colding, obviously, I then wouldn't be able to top up on the barrel cards like I can now, so... Sometimes you do have to be proactive with your uh, super colds as well. The opponent's able to Liminion for Arvin, so they're going to be popping off with Forest and Candy more than likely. Definitely taking their time with it here. It is the expected outcome though. See the fish. Probably gonna get a Pidgey piece. And Pidgey finds Charizard. You know the drill. Yep, there's Candy Pidge. Quick search for the other missing piece of the puzzle. They would have to have the perfect hand to be able to respond on this Chen, though. Is their last card in hand a damage mod? <laughs> or are they just going to hit me with Heat Tackle here with a Charmander for 30? Yep, okay, Candy to the Bench means it's a 30 damage poke with a little 60 hit point Charmander. And hey, that's pretty good for us, so it means we can continue to develop. We actually top deck Irida, which is pretty insane. Honestly, I think Candy Backs is definitely good. Whenever you can weave these in, it's just such a nice peace of mind play to make that you just know you're well developed and it takes away like defensive lines of play your opponent can do against you. Especially with Iono Counter Catcher and stuff like that now. They can really swipe, like the game can be taken away from you at times. So, always nice to develop that second Backs. We're going to keep on the same mentality and just take another single prize knockout. We're now two prizes up. We have one hit code potential into Charizard. There's a Luminion around. There's Pidgeot. Um, so we shouldn't really struggle at this stage to win a prize race. You know, we've gone two up. And this is why the Chen Pao matchup is still good into Charizard. Um, it historically has been a good matchup provided you set up. We'll see a quick search from the Pidgeot. don't really know what their best line is here. I've got the barrel developed. Yeah, like this Iona really isn't hurting us now. Too much anyway. They are getting power like developed, but they're just so far behind in this race. It's going to be a Burning Darkness response. We can go Greninja... Ultra Ball's pretty interesting here. I have a few different lines of play, right? I can try and... Yeah, we're going to bid for one. And that opens up Ultra Ball for Iron Hands. I think we've prized our other uh, Chen Pao here. So, proactive Iron Handsing is a little bit risky. Because um, it's putting another two-prizer onto the board. But I have so many ways of taking a three-prize knockout hit. Or just a two-prizer on a Charmander or Manaphy. The second bib does get us the crossies that we need. So I can go to zero card hand here and just amp you very much through something. Definitely debate whether or not I want to take the three prize KO now or a two prize KO. I do opt for the Luminion in the end. Definitely a contentious one. I still don't know what's actually the right play here. Um, whether or not I should just take the two or the three. I think because I already had double barrel set up, there was no reason to not um, like I'm not worried about Iono in any way and because I did have a Chen Pao prized, I wanted to see the extra card from prizes that was honestly my overall logic towards the end um, 
but also because I have this one hit code potential, I still have so many resources left. I don't mind having to go for a Charizard and be forced into a seven prize game. So honestly, we just feel miles ahead just because we kept up with a multi prize knockout last turn. See a lost city. Part of the benefit of taking the three prize turn last turn was also to deny and like an Iono plus Radiant Zard. Again, not that Iono is a big deal, but sometimes with barrel clogs you, you know. In the end, it's just a big Zard smack, and uh, yeah, you already have the champ out from prizes, so this should be a pretty routine way through. Seeing that we already have uh, four energy in play, I can actually just uh, well, we're poke stopping, but I can rod shivery chill here. That'll do it. Yeah, so nice win against Zard. Still one of your favourable matchups for sure. So we're going second this time. And we're up against Mew VMAX. This is one of our shakier matchups. Oh, as they hit a Tails on a Cram. <laughs> Let's see how that affects them. Oh, they're doing the hand thinning thing. Oh my goodness. Yep, going to one card. Let's see it. Oh, it's a VIP. We're playing the game. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, yeah, this is traditionally one of your tougher matchups, I feel like, just because to ramp all the way up is so tricky, but with Vessel, you at least gain some percentage points, I feel like, in that you can you can ramp your Hellblade a little bit quicker than previously. I go for a proactive Shivery Chill here, just so I can improve my Iona wads of hitting Pokemon and item cards. Uh, we are going to VIP here, and then we're going to Vessel, can Greninja draw, do hit Ultra Ball, that's pretty nice. The Poke Stop's a dream, it gets Vip and Nest, so we can actually get a really well-established board here. We are representing a couple multi-prize Mons, but um, we've got pretty much everything we want in play here. Which is nice. Opponent sparkling, just so they can have maybe a retreat option here. Actually, Palp had the sparkle back. That's interesting. Just wanting to reduce the hand size for Greninja. There's the box of disaster. Ooh, Pokestop milling uh, path is really good for us, as well as a VMAX. That could be a problem. See the forest seal stone. Actually, just going to switch and pass into the Mew. Rather than just pay retreat to VMAX. So maybe they want to keep the Genesect open as an attacking option. Obviously, it can knock out Gem Pals. Definitely a slower turn from the Mew, though. I think from here, we should be like pretty well set to just win a trade. It's mostly about us being diligent now about our board state, really. Bax is online, thanks to the Irida. I'm going to slam a poker stop. We can conceal fairly comfortably. And we can just Hellblade through the active. Just need three energy. And there aren't too many hurdles for us now, I don't think. Honestly, because we are a setup deck, once you get there, you kind of just get there. <laughs> and Chen Bao is really good at racing once that's sort of done. There's that sparkle that was recovered. Looks like it wasn't able to get anything. Maybe they were going to attempt to block slide backs there. But we do have candy backs in hand, so I don't think it would have changed too much. I could also have irrited for cross switcher and stayed on a multi-prize turn. Yeah, they are actually going to come in and Technoblast Chen Pao. It's just fine though, it really doesn't matter. There's Candy Backs. We can go Bidoof again, just stay as well set up as you physically can. 
is the idea. We're going to get some fodder out with our Irida here for Superior. I want to keep that cross switcher around. Just thinking about throwing these energies around a little bit. Get rid of uh, Irida and uh, Friggy there. Not too big of a deal. We have Rod Ultra Ball for our uh, Chen Pao for next turn. Actually, proactively Ultra Balling. And uh, yeah, we can just take the KO. There shouldn't be many ways back for our opponent here now. When Hand Disruption's not even doing a huge amount, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. See the town store. Like, we've only played, is it one superior this game? Two, possibly. We just have so many resources to close. We actually get the perfect hand from that judge as well. <laughs> Nestle Super Rod for Chen Pao. And then the superior to close the game. So, don't even need the bit barrel drawer, actually. <laughs> just hit the nuts. Yeah. Certainly one way to do it. <clears throat> nice, pretty nice win against the Mew. We are uh, getting to go first again in this next game. Not the best hand, a little bit shaky. We've got Nestle Pokestop. <laughs> Our opponent's led with... Oh, wow, the VIP opens up the hand. We uh, are staring down a Sableye. We Pokestop, we get rid of Chen and Water, which is a little bit awkward, but we do hit Rope, which is nice for our hand next turn, possibly. Seal cards from our opponent. They get a couple Comfe out. They're obviously Tina. They probably want to keep that last board space for Manaphy if they can. It's actually really rough that they started the Sableye. It's an expensive bench space for them. See a couple Flower Selectings. There's the second VIP. Oh, interesting. They go second Tina, actually. So no defense against a turn two Shuriken, actually. Candy's a pretty nice pickup. Uh, we can go Bats Calibre plus Vessel now from the Irida and get more draw from Greninja. We could also go... Definitely an alternative line there was going for Ultra Ball Bib. But the fact that we want Water Energy is kind of the reason why you also want to have the Vessel proactively there. The Greninja does get actually into the, uh, the Ultra Ball 4-bit barrel here. Gonna get rid of backs. We can proactively super cold rod back in those pokes that we've just discarded. Then bib for the fresh five. No water or superiors just yet. We still have poker stop, which can help us get there. Oh, but a fresh whiff. <laughs> Triple discard. So uh, we had the opportunity to punish with Shuriken, but didn't quite work out for us. So we're going to end up paying retreat, then just hailblading for the one prize knockout instead. The opponent didn't chorus, so it's still nice to uh, deny a confair. They're only at two in the loss zone right now. Opponent's going to conceal away a jet and get a selection in. And then they have another jet. Poke stop hits some item cards. We see a path. We do have the bounce in hand. Oh, damn, no chorus for them. So again, pretty slow, gonna be honest. With Shivery Chill uh, and Superior, I should be able to Greninja here. Yeah, we 
can get the uh, water energy out. I'm going to toss the barrel and one of our candies. We'll load up Greninja and Pow to retreat. Going to pop down Manaphy. Obviously, there was nothing that could take a two prize KO, but you do always have to be wary of like Shuriken into Lost Mine players from the opponent, so I don't want to give them too much damage. We can just go for a Shuriken here. I'm going to continue to take out Confei because we know that uh, they haven't found Chorus yet, right? So if they're not hitting the crucial threshold of seven, they're really not doing much. Do you see concealed cards from them? Nestle for Cram can come in. Pokestop. 13 are coming down. I mean, all their Colorists have gone, so. Oh, sorry, all their Confei have gone, so. See the Rope Counter Catcher? And they're just going to take out Friggy. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. We have Rod in hand. We actually should be able to pretty much checkmate from this position uh, with Iron Hands coming back into the deck. You could think two ways about this. We could be like, oh, let's get some more Friggy backs just in case our opponent goes for one. Or we can go fishing for Superior and put ourselves in a situation where Ampy very much takes two prizes and then we're just representing game next turn even if backs goes. So we're really just trying to be as... Pre as uh, painful as possible for our opponent by going proactive hands we do get superior so i can also just load up four more energy on this board and from there it's really checkmate right <laughs> we shouldn't be losing from here um yeah we're gonna hold the one energy just for any retreat option required but we're able to take the two prize ko with hands and uh yeah like i said checkmated basically even any hand disruption there as long as the barrel stayed on the board, we basically win immediately next turn. So let's get one more game in. We lead out with the Chen. We see a Squawk. So it could be Roaring Moon. It could be Maridon. Gonna see the Shivery Chill plus the Vessel. We're going fishing with Greninja. We already have a Friggy back, so I think it's worth the risk. Nothing really comes of it, just some cards for next turn, so we'll pass things over there. And see what we're up against. Oh, Basin means it's the Valiant deck. This is definitely a tough matchup. Um, yeah, this is always scary because the opponent can target down Friggy pretty quick. And when they already have a Squawk developed, you know they're doing bits. Yeah, literally Tachyon bits coming in. The Squawk and Seize early. They got rid of boss, which is good. Definitely worth noting that a boss is down. There's the future booster capsule. Do they have a way of... Oh, there's the research. Yoga looping turn one. There's the third Valiant at the very least. So if they want to just take Friggy... Yeah, they're just going to take Friggy. Limit our plays. And they could go base and attach. Switch. To just take out Greninja as well. No, they're just going to base and pass, so that's at least something. We get to conceal cards, no value from Hisuian. And no real option for us here, so we're just going to have to pass things over. The deck is uh, pretty vulnerable to the Valiant gang. We see a rope from them. They're going to start bitting down the active, actually. With the 60 from the Valiant's. They can put this Chen Pao to 20 hit points remaining, which sets up, sets up another Yoga Loop, so uh, smart math from them. As I'm going to churn the researches over and over. There's the Forest Hill Stone and the base into the Entei, so they can come in and swing. The Entei would be going down, of course, but I think they're pretty happy with that. Trekking Shoes sees a few more cards. They can Fleet Foot it as well. Yeah, there's the Burning Rondo. Okay, Irid is a nice pickup. That's going to help us try and re-establish a board here. 
conceal cards first. Gonna grab the 78 point Fridgy backs, Galaxy Brain, as well as the uh, other Fridgy, because obviously they could still have enough switch cards. Uh, I'm gonna not poke a stop here because I don't want to give our opponent access to just more switch cards. I definitely need a Bats Calibre to stick if I'm gonna be able to do anything. So we're just gonna take the two prizes, knowing our opponent's probably gonna Yoga Loop the active next turn and then likely take out like Greninja or a Fridgy Bax. <laughs> They're basically gonna be down to two prizes, right? Maybe even one if they're able to do enough bitting onto another Fridgy here. Straight away we see the research into the Forest Seal Stone. This is some Tachyon bits. Yeah, now targeting down the next Fridgy Vax. And we see the Yoga Loop initiates their next turn. One really cool thing about Yoga Loop actually is it lets the opponent essentially double dip the basin which really lets Charizard come into the mix quite nicely in the game. You can see a Chorus. So they have two cards left in deck now. You can see a Rope. We're going to feed the uh, Greninja. So they're continuing to Tachyon bit us down. the double turbo and yeah they are just coming in with combustion blast so it's looking pretty bleak here to be honest uh, there is a line of play where we can win though <laughs> and that is to take a ko oh wow especially with the uh, irida top deck now otherwise you would have been hopeful on poker stop or maybe recycling greninja uh, but with the with the irida draw we can attempt to Bax Calibre this turn, bounce Stadium, hope that they can't reach on Bax Calibre. And then next turn we could amp you very much for game <laughs> on Squawkerville with pivoting cards. So bouncing the Stadium has to happen. Uh, we could be slamming these poker stops because we need to work towards cross switches, right, for next turn. No dice there, but we do Finn. So yeah, if Bax can tank, there is there is a way to win here. <laughs> it's just it's just a toughie. It really depends on how many switch cards are still remaining. The opponent only has these eleven cards to play with, right? They have nine in hand, two in the deck. They've been through triple basin. They obviously play four though. It really comes down to if they just have enough switch cards here to get over the line or not. Let's see. The trekking shoe gets them to the bottom of the deck. Do they have enough access to, be uh, to beat us? There's the Ente. There's the Basin. Currently that's 120, obviously. See the switch. Tachyon bits. They can then free retreat. It's just if they have that last one. Uh, and they have the jet energy to just about get us. So yeah, definitely a tough matchup. But uh, we we had a way to win there. If they were just one resource light, we would have been uh, able to win. We're going to have one more game. Uh, it's just another one against Roaring Moon. Uh, but I thought this was an interesting one. We're going first. Uh, we do have a ton of ball search. This is a really insane hand, actually. Double Fridgy. Bidoof comes down. We have prized our Manaphy. It would be a nice card to develop here, actually. Just get the Mana Fee down. Just in case we're up against a water-based build. Um, but because we can't, I'm going to go Triple Fridgy as a way to protect ourselves instead. The opponent pops off with VIP Pass. Our hand's really good for next turn as well, actually. It's going to be Greninja Squawker Billy. The usual suspects. And uh, yeah, water energy is in the in the six as well. It's now in the discard pile, so it could be sardered and energy switched around. Poker stop from them gets rid of a moon and a sarder. That's not ideal for them. See 
Poke Gear Facada. They're going to Ultra Ball away the Cross Witcher and the Mew. I think this is just to give themselves a second Sada target here. Yeah, full value Sada. Is it Heavy Ball? See the escape rope. We'll go into Fridgy. Oh. Oh my god, they had the ideal hand. <laughs> They've gone down to a zero card hand, but they do get to turn one Shuriken us. Wow, okay. Um, they're working on a two card hand only, but they've got what they need. Sheesh. Well, uh, we top deck backs. So, even just, I mean, going with the Chen is pretty good here. Because they just have a two card hand. We're going to nest ball out to the hands, actually. You can see cards doesn't do too much. We're going to poke a stop. That was really good, though. Vessel. Oh, I can actually come in with hands now. Wow. Uh, so that's that's gone pretty well. We can we have to do some weird stuff with uh, Bat's Caller, but we can do it, right? We can thin our entire hand down. Super cold retreat, super cold amp you. Uh, so it's uh, it's something. We've both kind of gone all in for tempo. They went all in to shuriken us down, and uh, we've come back with the amp you very much with just the Iono as the fullback. As you've seen before, though, the 230 hit points is really annoying for them. Might force a gouging. Oh, wow, the Pokestop hits triple. I think that was Vessel Nest Ball Dark Patch. That's got to be decent. We see Attachment Dark Patch. Nest Ball. The Mew X is already gone. Just be another Roaring Moon, and just a pass. Okay, so that's good to see. We are going to reload the Iono here. Mostly looking to find um, Super Rod for Frigibacks. Looks like that's not coming our way, though. We are going to have one more shot with the Barrel. If we're unable to super rod though, I might just have to attack with the active so that if the opponent targets the backs, I can amp you very much again. It's one of these weird situations where you don't want to completely give up. Like I could have just gone Chen Pao, take two prizes, but they can then come back with the backs caliber KO and maybe get into a decent spot. This way I punish the backs gust pretty heavily with hands. I'm incentivizing them to take a two-prize knockout, but in order to take out the hands, I can respond with a single prizer. This is the re really big difference between Chen Pao and Roaring Moon. They they have to play all their multi-prizers down onto the board, whereas we can be super selective about when they come into play. You actually see the attached retreat of their Roaring Moon. Dark Patch the Bench Dude. <clears throat> and they must just be, yeah, Frenzy Gouging. Their only way through the hands. This is why I preach the Brute Bonnet so often. <laughs> If, you, if they have Brute Bonnet there, they take the KO, we're in a whole heap of trouble. I'd have to, like, gust KO with backs his benched uh, Roaring Moon. And that would, that would feel horrible. 
Especially when I need to get rid of a uh, reload of fridges here just to get into the game. So that I'm not immediately punished by gust. We're going to get the Chem Pal, the Fridgy, and the Backs back. We're going to immediately get Fridgy down. We're going to make our next big barrel. So at least we have draw power going our way. Also looking for fodder for this superior. Gonna have to get rid of the crossy that we just drew into. But things are looking pretty good now. We can finish off that Roaring Moon, set up the Squawk as well. Put them in that similar awkward position of maybe having to heal the Squawk Billy or collapse it or something. Do see the poker stop. Vessel. I think their best play is to take out the Bat's Calibre. Hope that I don't have Last Candy in deck. Or that I can't access it. Actually, currently can't access it from this hand. Mysterious Tail does give Dark Patch, so there is another moon ready to go. Oh, we do see the crossies. Yeah, pretty much the best thing they can do here. Looks like they're just thinning Cologne. So it is going to be the Calamity Storm. And it's down to us to reload with candy here. Uh, we do have some nice cards to lower our hand size here. We have Ultra Ball. We have Rod, which is an insta-playable. Water's insta-playable. We have pretty good odds. We have two Iridas, the candy, the poker stop in the deck. We can thin the rope. Knowing that... Greninja can be game on Squawk. We can reload a water pretty comfortably, knowing that that can be more draw power with Greninja as well. And there it is, the candy. To close out the game. Once again, just dealing with Squawk ability, setting those up for damage. So crucial, actually. <laughs> Plenty of damage there. So nice, another win against Roaring Moon. So yeah, that's Chen Pao. Did have a few harsh losses on the ladder. You saw it in a few situations there. I had a pretty duff hand until the top deck of one card or the concealed cards of something that was helpful, a Pokestop that goes well. Sometimes they don't go well, and sometimes you just kind of fizzle and fall flat. That is the nature of the archetype, and that's still why I'm a little bit cynical and skeptical of the deck. Uh, it has some of the, bo the best plays it can make. Uh, in terms of prize racing, it's really good at representing single prize board states and being in control of the map once you get into the game. And it can feel like the strongest deck in the game once you're nicely established, but getting to that point is a little bit of work. Let me know your thoughts on Chen Pao down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Cheers.